Stay tuned. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, I didn't realize it was this good of a view up here. Oh, gosh. Medina. Medina. <laughs> We're in Medina. Yeah. And it's a pretty. The Knights of Mortal England. <laughs> Medina traces back about 4,000 years. Uh, it was the original capital of Malta from antiquity to the medieval period. It's confined within its walls and it still has a population of about 300. The city was founded as Maleth and about the 8th century um, and has history all the way through from the Phoenicians to the Romans to the Byzantines. It's a very good example of a medieval city. There's a pigeon. There's a Roman a villa that we're going to go have a look at. There's tons of museums and kinds of cool stuff. So, yeah, let's go wander around this really cool old city. Yeah. There's also a Playmobil man. Of course. Yeah. reading about history. <laughs> We went early because we got it basically to ourselves for a really long time. City, the old capital. Right, speaking of old, Malta was part of Roman uh, Empire. So they've got loads of more Roman history here, including a villa that we're about to go see. So more history. Go see more. More, 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 more. Ice cream. That bitch knows how to make a good uh, shop. Yeah. It's a cannoli. A big old cannoli. Oh. <laughs> and now we are in Dom's Romano. Do you know what that it's is? Roman stuff. It's a Roman temple. Roman villa? Not temple. Roman villa. <gasps> Let's go look at some Roman stuff. The Roman Domus. This Domus is the only substantial building discovered within the ancient town of Malit, and it is indeed the richest house ever to be found in Malta. It had imperial statues and mosaics, which are among the finest in the Mediterranean. It was built towards the middle of the first century BC and was used in the first and possibly second centuries. The term Dominus stands for the Roman townhouse and thus differs from a villa, which are country estates outside city walls, uh, which is a private residence within a city. 
Although the primary intention of mosaics was to decorate floors of importance, they were also meant to sustain heavy treading, as well as also used for the underfloor heating uh, system, which most Romans had in their house. The attention to detail and also attention to craftsmanship with making mosaic floors is what allows us to still have incredibly preserved mosaic floors standing today. It's very well done. It's amazing, isn't it? Isn't it? Like the way they figure that out. <laughs> Catacombs, which is an underground burial ground, and it's the largest uh, catacombs found in Malta. Fourth century BC. Yeah. So apparently, rich people used to have processions, and it was mostly men who would have them. Yeah. Um, but poor people were either cremated or buried at night time. Oh. And um, just close relatives they were. So funeral processions were pretty long uh, and very important for the Roman period. Uh, they'd have many, many different roles. Firstly, of the family, the pallbearers. They'd also include things like death masks, which were wax masks made of the deceased. Uh, they'd have mimes who would wear the death masks. And they'd also have paid mourners who were hired to mourn and lament and sing funeral songs. And apparently some funeral processions would cause traffic jams and traffic problems. Catacomb uh, one. Covering more than 2,000 square meters and a home to at least 420 burials. really interesting that they show you the name of the catacomb, how many steps and sizes and everything, and also which ones this is dedicated to. So these ones are pagans, which basically just means Romans, uh, but the majority are either Christian or pagans. And this one has real bones. Of course, in that these are burial places and that they contain real remains, we will be respectful. <laughs> so in all the catacombs they have areas like this, which are communal areas, areas that they would have feasts, eat, moments to remember the dead. Oh cool! Oh my god, that's really cool. It's a door made out of rock. That's amazing. Very cool hinges. This one for you. <laughs> my tummy can stand. <laughs> You've got separate eating areas. <laughs> <laughs> that one looks ripe. There's one that looks pretty good, but like the other one's a bit sad. So is that prickly pear fruit? It's probably like seeds. Mm. What is it? Prickly pear fruit. Mm. What is it? It's like right. It's like watermelon. Yeah. Really? Mm. A little bit less sweet. Oh yeah, the seeds. Mm. The seeds are full of antioxidants. Just oh. <laughs> don't taste it. <laughs> it is like a little bit of um less sweet watermelon, isn't it? Yeah. Wow, that's. I'm actually quite impressed. I was expecting it to be really not nice. <laughs>
was an amazing day. It's nice having friends to share with. Really is. We say goodbye to Tommy and Matter and then we're going back to our hotel. Can have a rest. rest and then go out to some dinner. Yeah. Find some food of some sort. Yeah. But yeah, that was day I guess day two in beautiful Malta. A really, really good day. Beautiful. And we'll uh see what we get up to we're gonna mostly relax this evening because we've got a big day tomorrow of museums all around Valletta, we're staying in Valletta. And yeah, but what an amazing day. Yeah. Loved it. Is that a duck? I didn't make you. Oh! <laughs> oh! I'm a dog! <laughs> <laughs> Any more? <laughs> Looks like a bat. <laughs> Thank you, my lovely. Good night. Good night. <laughs>